some news. My name is Mike B, a.k.a. Phony. Today's date uh, is uh, August 19th, 2022. The time is 324, but you'll never know if it's in the morning or not. <laughs> uh, this is a discussion we had prior to the stream. Uh, where's the co-host? That's right. The co-host is right here. Thank you so much for joining me, co-hosts. Hello, Mixer. There's jokes. Hi, YouTubers. Hello, YouTubers. Oh, Internet. 1524 in real time. 1500 hours. Half past 1500. <laughs> yes, there's many, many ways to say that. All right. All right. Excuse me. Pardon me. All right. Uh, feeling pretty good. Might be a little tall today. Went to the chiropractor this morning. Spent a whole $15 and had to crack my neck. So if I seem a little taller than normal, then that's why. We have no choice. We're trapped here. If someone on YouTube sees us, send help. Fuck. First up. Speaking of a potential trap. What does karaoke machines, Frodo, chivalry, goat simulator, Borderlands, Duke Nukem, Deus Ex, Valheim, Dark Horse Comics, Sellers of Catan, <gasps> Killing Floor, and video game boxes all have in common. Anybody? Anybody? <gasps> you bought them all? Unless you is Embracer Group. <laughs> oh! oh. <laughs> They're made by the people. They've been embraced! The Embracer Group has been on a spree. We talked a little bit about the Embracer Group buying uh, something like earlier this year or something. It's a Swedish group uh, backed by lots of money. And they are they are setting themselves to be uh, basically like European EA or something. European Activision. That's how I've seen them called because it's basically buying all these games. They have 126 studios or something. 300 games currently in development or some shit and every other month they add another collection of games to their uh to their catalog or collection of um of uh of uh hold on let me get some more here limited run games um let me just skip back on this limited run games was the most recent one along with because there's so many sing tricks now limited run games if you don't know is the uh is the site that Kind of is the, I guess the, uh, um, the successor to the indie box where you can buy, except for it's very, it's very premium. You can buy these. Oh, let me go ahead and pull it up. Actually, it'll be a little bit easier to explain that way. Are they behind the uh, Gizmodo handheld <laughs> Swedish mafia? So here we go. They basically put out these like collector's edition style of uh, boxes so that you could pick up. Um, and you pre-order them. I've seen some responses saying that pre-orders take a long time to get in. Uh, most notably, recently with some of their uh, with some of their offerings, with like Scott Pilgrim, I believe was one that people want that people are saying they never got. Um, so there's there's some hit and misses here with this, and uh, this is this is acquired by Embracer Group. Uh, Sing Tricks. Sync Trace is another press release on from the same site, the same date. Uh, we have, are they even times you know, six? Yeah, here we go, six ten. Uh, that would be in the morning, uh, 607, 610. Uh, this is when they announced Sync Tricks. Sync Tricks, uh, they make karaoke machines. Like, I looked these up and I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, this is, they make karaoke machines. <laughs> like, oh, gosh. And they also do this, too. No, thanks. There you go. Um, See, I heard that group of finance one uh, one billion cost about five hundred cinema. So what else they gonna be going for? Yes. So there's more. So there's Tuxedo Labs. Also, there's a tech-based game development company. Uh, this release is six fifteen. Tripwire Interactive. This is something that we knew was coming, I believe. Uh, this is uh, now it's a six seventeen. I mean, so in a matter of like ten minutes, they've acquired like four companies. At least they announced it. And then some of those have like sub acquisitions. Where like some, I think like uh, Tuxedo recently acquired a couple other game studios or something and so then they acquired those as well because by proxy it was just like it's a lot it's a lot and so when the news came out about this it was like it was like embracer buys blank embracer buys blank and it was like one after another and i was like what the fuck is going on like i've heard of acquisitions we've all heard of acquisitions that happen all the time but not like four announcements in like 10 minutes and they're not small tripwire interactive is, is not small right uh, there's more. Yes, there's more. Yeah, sorry. Yes, right. Uh, the, probably the, one of the biggest known ones. 
uh, is that they acquired the Lord of the Rings and the uh, the Hobbit IP rights. So this is this is very specific. I know this this seems a bit weird because Amazon uh, actually I have the link here. Amazon bought uh, the rights for just one show back earlier this year for two hundred fifty million dollars. I'm sorry, uh, two thousand seventeen for two hundred fifty million dollars um, in order to make a series. Oh, for it. And it says here, we'll cost at least $465 million for the first season. Um, so that's what my friend was talking about. Yeah, if you were getting a new drink, I'll oh, get a new drink. Oh, you already finished one, huh? <laughs> so yeah, Lord, yeah, Lord of the Ring Rikes are kind of all over the place. It's it's mostly just like split into two major ones. There's like the gaming and then like other media like focused ones. And then there's like, I guess the show, or like TV series, as long as they don't exceed eight episodes is what I believe the rule is that I read somewhere in here. Uh, <laughs> so there's really specific rules with IP and how they're allowed to use it, but they did pay, you know, 200 and 200 something million dollars for it. And then meanwhile, Embracer Group comes in and spends about a half a billion dollars, I think like 750 uh, uh, Swedish crowns uh, for, is that right? Is it Swedish crowns? Um, uh, for it, which equates to like 500, like a half, half a billion dollars, something like that. So they, they, they ended up getting... Uh, the entirety of 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 these IPs from a different group versus what uh, Amazon had spent money for, which is from another group. And actually, I have I have a breakdown here uh, as well. This is from a Reddit user. It says it's worth noting Amazon bought the license from the Tolkien estate, not from Middle Earth Enterprises, um, which is what uh, the Embracer Group bought. It was the um, Middle Earth Enterprises M E E. Uh, this all happened after a lawsuit involved Warner slash New Line M E M E E. Uh, and the state was uh, settled, making it possible for the estate to shop TV show adaptations to clients like Amazon with support from New Line. But MEE only has exclusive rights for films, games, and other things, not TV shows. See? So, um, the Swedish fish, the Swedes use crowd, does use crowns? Yes, SEK, Swedish Kronar. Okay, I was close. Uh, so Tolkien's family owns part, and some other other person owns the other part. So the Tolkien family versus is uh, versus Saul 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 Zaints is the uh, is the owner of the or was I guess I was I guess the owner of the uh, M E E uh, Middle Earth uh, uh, Enterprises and he bought it like decades ago like decades ago he bought it uh, he bought the rights to all this stuff um, but he's getting old so you know some people are saying so maybe he wants to make a buck or other speculation is um, that there's only so long left with a uh, uh, copyright <clears throat> before it goes into the public domain the whole the entirety of the lord of the rings franchise so the 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 later the longer they wait the less value that it would have however that's based off of like the u.s copyright law which i don't which in uh <clears throat> in some parts of europe it's different where it's uh, X number of years, as everyone's saying, 75 years. Uh, but there's also a caveat too. It's X number of years after the author has is deceased. So there's there's a caveat there. So may, while maybe I heard I heard it was like 75 years, but it's after the 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 author is deceased. So so it could be a lot longer than that. So there's speculation as to why all this stuff is happening. It seems like it's just a lump to buy a ton of shit. Um, and to get their hands into a lot of stuff, diversifying their portfolios as, as uh, you know, as an uh, investment group. Um, THQ Nordic, by the way, and Bracer Group. Uh, Tolkien died in 1973. Okay, cool. So, hey, by the time we hit like 2050 or so, um, it's a, it's a Medicop, not, not a big, not a big investment. Now, imagine a huge IP not fighting tooth and nail to keep their property out of public domain. No company would do that, right? <laughs> Disney, <hubba. laughs> well, I mean, we need the poos in the public domain. We already know that now. 2048. Oh, so close. Um, so <laughs> the, uh, let me see. In, two, in here, Saul Zane, so here we go. Saul Zane in February was trying to sell it for $2 billion. So this is where some of the discussion around whether or not um, it's being sold because maybe they're just like, fuck it, let's just offload it. We don't want to deal with the IP anymore. It's a lot of money, regardless of whether it's $2 billion or whether it's a half a billion dollars. It's still way more money than they'll ever need, so fuck it. Um, <clears throat> we'll never know exactly why they sold it, but it's in the hands of somebody who wants to do something more with it. And, you know, the Hobbit movies are just kind of okay, so, you know. <laughs> but the games, the games are hit and miss. Lotro, pretty good MMO, but that's also kind of old. What other kind of Lord of the Rings games come out recently? Isn't there like a recent one that came out or something? I don't know. But 
He wanted two billion dollars for February. Ended up ended up selling it for uh, for less than that. Only half a bill. Uh, fantastic, my, fantastic, my beer. Are you gonna play the next box? I am not gonna play the next box. But I don't even know the name of the next box. It's something about dragons or something, right? I have not followed that shit in a long time. Uh, <laughs> And this is the, yeah, this is the note. Yeah, sorry, this is the notes on that. Um, there's a Golem Stealth game. That's right. You mean Lotro was the Wild Killer? Ah, oh, the Legos were okay. Lotro Batman games. <laughs> anyway, so <clears throat> they are buying up a lot of stuff. Um, and our discussions about them, uh, I, I want to say it was a couple months ago or so, was just basically speculation as to like why they're buying it up. And so further speculation is like. Okay, this is a this is a pretty significant diversity of products. You know, they have hardware products like Singtrix, where they're selling, uh, where their focus is on karaoke machines or something. Um, and then there's <clears throat> there's the uh, I mean, there's all the game IPs they own now: Deus Ex, Tomb Raider, uh, Borderlands, all the other games that I named at the beginning of the stream. Like, it's a lot that they're that they're they're you know kind of adding to their catalog uh some some have speculated that you we might see like a launcher or something for for all of their games kind of like a you play thing or you connect or whatever it's called or like a, a bethesda launcher or whatever so we could see we could see a uh a launcher like that but i feel like that's probably not gonna happen i feel like that's probably not gonna happen they're pretty much buying out everything that is not already owned or licensed or acquired or whatever by you know, Microsoft, um, uh, Epic, uh, not so much Steam, because Steam pretty much just functions mostly as just a game platform distributor. Uh, government secretly subsidizing these acquisitions to keep them out of out of ten cent. <laughs> uh, you're not entirely wrong, though. Maybe one day we will have a launch for all the launchers. Ah, kind of feels like that. <clears throat> so yeah, on that note, though, there are uh, the group that that purchased them is uh, is the Savvy Gaming Group, uh, and this we definitely talked about. Uh, of some months ago because we were talking about who the savvy gaming group is which is the um uh, the saudi arabia public investment fund which is personally financed by the prince of saudi arabia who is wildly controversial um personally and then uh also you know the human right issues that happens and uh, that's already that's occurring now in uh, saudi arabia so there's a lot of like there's a lot of speculation as to why, or a lot of uh, argument as to whether or not this is considered blood money or money that maybe we shouldn't take uh, because of what it's linked to we've already seen it happen with like the uh the saudi arabia like um golf tournament that they did uh competing with the pga we've seen it in other industries too where they're buying they they picked up uh esl um so they own esl now so they're trying to do what's called they call it sports washing right but now it's esports washing where they're trying to basically use use their purchased uh, <clears throat> uh, uh properties as a means to uh raise public uh, appreciation or, or whatever for the um, uh, for Saudi Arabia. So um, he chops people up. Not a friendly man. That's right. The butcher bone saw Mohammed bone saw. Uh, they saw that there's still a few game companies. I'd be not managed by men in suits and fix that. <laughs> yeah. God damn. Um, <clears throat> so, yes, it is, it is supported by Savvy Gaming Group. A billion dollars of investment from the uh, Savvy Gaming Group, which is which is the Saudi Arabia prince like crown money like it's, it's royal money basically from the saudi arabian government it's just going through this group they put together it's not necessarily shady like it's public they put it out there they're like yeah we put it out there because we want to invest in a lot of stuff so they created this fund the public investment fund and they have like a certain amount of that like allocated to whatever whatever uh and this one is a savvy gaming group and they're the ones that made the um one billion dollar or 8.6 percent or so of uh of stock control of the of the company itself and so here the ceo of uh, of Embracer had to make a comment on this, uh, which makes sense because it is very controversial and people are you know, genuinely concerned about like, you know, where this money comes from. Um, and if, if we should be supported by, we should allow games to be supported by, by countries who do these, who have these types of atrocities happen locally. Uh, not that being from the States really absolves you from anything, but still, I don't care how many good games they release until they give them equal rights and stop murdering people over religious beliefs. I'm not going to give them a cent. And that's where the line is right there. Yeah, that's true. That's that's and that's a good line to draw. Right. Like, it's true. Like I said, like the U.S., like we don't really we don't we're not like the good guys or anything. But I mean, <laughs> but compare and contrast, we're like light years beyond uh, and ahead uh, evolution wise uh, than uh, the Saudi Arabia. We just don't have that money. Um that fuck you money. Fuck you, Prince Money. See, unlike Microsoft, you almost don't hear much about Embracer Group and other amount of companies they gobble up. 
uh, like it's Thanksgiving dinner. Well, we're starting to hear a lot about it now, right? Uh, Activision Blizzard, the country. It's 10 cents is China. What is that for? Um, and are we the baddies? Yeah. What's a what's a few CIA coups between France? Yeah, yeah, you know? Jeez. And so he made, he basically put down, I put out a, a announcement here, just basically a, a press release saying, you know, I want to be clear that Embracer Group will be operated by me, our, our operator CEOs, management teams, etc. And it says Embracer is built on the principles of freedom, inclusion, humanity, and openness. And he has to say this stuff because Saudi Arabia doesn't really support all that stuff. <laughs> it wouldn't be in here. This whole thing wouldn't be here if it was, if it didn't exist, right? <laughs> if it was just rumors or something, he wouldn't make a huge fucking statement like this. Um, and, you know, it just basically continues to say that, yeah, this is uh, the initiatives of bringing uh, more long term shareholders on board. Don't don't stop with SDG. Our active discussions with other sizable strategic and non strategic potential shareholders will continue, uh, as stated in our last quarterly reporting. That's just the most big, the biggest, the most recent one. I don't think there's anything on that list that they support. <laughs> and it's a short list. It's a short, very obvious list of things that you probably should. Um and so, yeah, it's, it's, they're basically just saying, they're reaffirming, they're saying, hey, you know, we know that we took all this money from this guy, right? But, but, but we're still the ones in charge, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> and it says, uh, yeah, here, there are currently more gamers in uh, MENA than in Europe or the U.S. markets. Um, the Embracer and the SSG team, led by a longtime industry veteran CEO, Brian Ward, have spent the last six months learning about each other and the sh sharing thoughts on how we can work together to grow the in the future. That's basically just all the whining and dining, like before you guys actually like put the deal down. Six months is uh, it's a good amount of time, though. Uh, questions have been asked about potential board seat. Ultimately, this is a question for shareholders. However, I would like to, uh, I, I, it would be relevant to share my view. Brian has a deep industry knowledge that is valuable to Embracer, and I would be supportive if he personally would like to contribute to the board at a later date, as long as he's committed to the time needed. If not, I look forward to building a strong relationship with SGG regardless. So addressing everything you can here basically saying we're still in control of the company it's it's eight percent he even addresses here he says you know they get ss sgg will own slightly more than five percent of the votes and eight percent of the capital and they have invested uh in embracer because they support our current vision strategy and leadership not to change it so what we can see when you get a lot of investments into a company like this right to like a, a company that's going and gobbling up a bunch of others is we're probably going to see a lot of like paring down a lot of like trimming ways to basically because all these investments they don't they're not just for the good for the good of humanity right especially saudi arabia they're not like oh yeah sure man we want to make gaming better right <laughs> he, they're they're getting involved because they want to return on their investment right they want to just get richer more money they could more money buy more stuff uh so the best way to do that is if you know if you're acquiring a lot of companies is go through and see where all the fat is and start trimming so what we'll probably see over the next few years because a lot of these things have like several years or so before they have to come due right whatever return that they expected to get. Um, we're probably going to see over the next few years, some layoffs and everything coming from any of the 120 studios or whatever it is that we saw um, uh, that we, uh, that they, that they um, uh, are, are part of now, or they're part of them now. Uh, buy more lions and Lambos. You can never have enough lions and Lambos, dude. Um, just like Musk. Yeah. So, so yeah, so this is, this is the current state of Embracer. Uh, Embracer and they're they are going on they are buying a lot of game companies they the, the announcers they put all in order here like you know one two three four five there's another one five was this one um it's just a lot let me see uh do you know why I can only see on PC and not Apple TV since night I don't have no idea Ruben <laughs> and they'll shake their heads and wonder why their games are shitty I have a hard time believing Embracer will ever publish a game with a healthy monetization model yeah we don't we don't I guess we don't really know yet right because like they've they've only been I mean they've only been a company for like 10 years and they've only started really acquiring games for four years and one of their recent games that w was released and this is pretty much THQ Nordic right direct um, was uh, four letters starts with like a with an E and it was like a sequel like Ezel or X Exel or something anyway Anyways, whatever it was, apparently it does not have good reviews or it's not doing good or something, but <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to really say it's hard. It can't really base an entire, you know, acquisition group, um, or investment groups success on a single in-house game release when they're in the business now of acquisitions and then doing something with those IPs that they have acquired. And that's going to take time, right? So you know, if you see it, I mean, from this point forward, you see anything related to Lord of the Rings that's not Amazon's TV show, these are the guys that own it. Just so glad to see you up and about. Stay classy. Hey, man, thank you. 
Thank you. Yeah, I am. Tr I'm trying to stay up and about. That's why I went to the chiropractor. <laughs> my one time that I went uh, and the last two years is the vast majority of the acquisition I seriously doubt they will affect anything these acquisitions are really just uh, uh just there to up their investment game rather than increase in development quality I also see that Warner Bros put uh, a patent on the nemesis system that was used in Shadows of War so they could not use it oh really now funny the most talked about system in that game in that there's like two games now right but yeah huh how great is that Yes, thank you. Alex 2. Yeah, I read an article. I didn't look up the game itself. I read an article that said that it, um, you know, it was, it was trying to basically paint it as a, um, so I have 850 IPs, as, as not doing too well, right? And I don't know anything about the game. Let me see. Alex 2 on Steam. Um, mixed. Okay, so yeah, it's not doing too well. I would say Mixed is probably not, not a great review here. That was March 1st, 2022. THQ Nordic. But again, it's THQ Nordic, which is Embracer Group, but, you know, you, you cannot, you cannot judge their one in-house release as as a barometer for like how their acquisitions are going to go right how the success of their acquisitions are going to go like lx2 i've never even heard of lx1 um and maybe it's because i don't pay attention to a lot of thq nordic games which is kind of not true because we played a bunch of them here um but <laughs> i mean i'm not gonna I, I, they clearly have billions of dollars to spend on shit so i don't think this one game success is, is it's not going to determine their uh uh, their investments futures uh, so now they have 850 ips god that number just seems so realistic actually I'm, I'm, is that an actual number i believe you i believe you speaking of nordic what is this oh god please somebody something i can play on stream uh tempest rising okay well, this is another time here all right moving on moving on moving on speaking of money speaking of money mm, 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 mm. Diablo 4. <laughs> Diablo 4 launched, uh, uh, announced a, uh, or they had a quarterly update. And in here, they, they started going over some of the monetization strategies and everything that you could expect from uh, Diablo 4 when it releases. Uh, and this one got uh, quite a bit of feedback. Quite a bit of feedback. Quite a bit of, uh, I mean, everything related to this game is going to have some kind of controversy for sure. Uh, but uh, D4 lost all of its height rip. So, so this is, this is the gist, right? The gist is that it's going to have a box price, right? You're going to pay for the box. It's going to have a skin slash cosmetic shop and it's going to have a battle pass, uh, for, for seasons to get into like the premium raid tier. Um, and, um, oh yeah. And then paid future expansion packs. So it kind of sounds like Destiny in a way, right? Destiny 2, Destiny 1, where like you pay for the game and then you you pay for cosmetics and then you pay for whatever and then you, you know, the, the battle pass, season pass, and you pay for expansions. So it's it's it basically sounds like an MMO. It's, it's not, I mean, it's not like you buy it and then you don't pay any more money. Those days are gone. This is a game that they're launching as a service. Sounds like a pass to me. Mm, better start saving my wild golds. It, are you sure they're allowed to use that stuff yet? I don't trust anything they say. Uh, even though Destiny is now base free. Right. Yeah, it's, now it's free. Now it's free. And I'm sure eventually Diablo 4, the base model will be free as well. Um, I wouldn't buy it at start. It's going to be free eventually. It's going to be free. There's too much There's too much monetization happening. They're going to make so much money on monetization too from whales that they'll probably just be like, fuck it. The box prices don't even matter. Make it free. Get more whales in here. <laughs> Activism was thirsty for another live service after Destiny. That's very true. Is a battle pass cosmetics only? So the battle pass is is, is basically gives you access to like premium uh, loot and all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> whether or not it's whether or not it is uh, cosmetics, it does not seem like it. it I, I, you know, it's hard to tell because in Diablo Immortal, the premium service or premium whatever that you get for premium runs uh, gives you like hella good ass loot. Uh, so. Yeah, it's 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 I don't know exactly how it laid, how it's laid out. Uh, not, not not with these expensive cosmetics. I'm not, uh, I'm gonna buy it. Cosmetics only. It says in the article. Yes. Okay. So 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 some time ago, talking about Diablo Immortal, uh, there was uh, there was a comment here by Wyatt Chang. Wyatt Chang is is the uh, don't you guys have phones? That's the guy, right? And so uh, he's responding to Zarin, who is a popular uh, Diablo 2 slash Diablo slash PoE player. Uh, and he says, hey, Ziz, I've been pretty upfront in many of my interviews, though apparently not in the past. That gear was the 12 item slots. He's talking about 
uh, being able to spend money to buy power in the game. And Wyatt here is saying specifically, he's saying that uh, in the interviews that you cannot buy gear that, that's in the 12 item slots, right? It says in many interviews also clearly state that money can advance gems and legendary gems. I'm sorry if that wasn't clear here. Gems can be used to make gear better. So effectively, yes, you can buy power. Uh, it says not being able to buy gear, the 12 slots. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's like actually, it's like very, 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 very nitpicky here. It's like not being able to buy gear in the 12 slots or XP remains uh, important to the team. For what it's worth, I appreciate you check out the game and blah, 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 blah. Um, what he doesn't make clear is that the games are the, game, the gems are literally 90% of your character power. Exactly. It's very, very disingenuous. I actually went and looked up the original tweet to see if I could find it um, uh, and see, see if one to see if it's real. <laughs> and then <clears throat> here's a follow up here by Zazarian. He says, I think a lot of people were expecting or, or, uh, or became sorry. A lot of people are expecting or became hopeful was that you couldn't buy more power for power buy power after seeing that statement. And there ends up being a lot of things you can buy, upgrading battle pass, extra chests after dungeons, that affects your character power, and it makes uh, the post you made seem uh, come across as disingenuous and disappointing to people that have been fans of Blizzard for such a long time. And it makes it matter a lot less. Makes it matter a lot less important if you can't literally. Okay, so this is extra words here. Uh, it makes it a lot less important if you can't literally buy gear when you basically can buy power anyway. So you guys get the gist. Um, and so, yeah, he does. He does respond to this, and he says that. Um, let me see. He says you can only upgrade. He's basically he's quoting himself to show that he was making the distinction, but he, but I mean, he was still doing it in a very disingenuous way. Uh, come on, let's monetize Rift Keys. I don't the company want to see the world burn. <laughs> I wonder, uh, I wonder the MMO that got canceled a long time ago was a Diablo MMO, and now they're trying to squeak it without, uh, uh, without having to spend too much money as they did in building WoW. Oh man, I don't think so, but. People want to get rid of their Blizzard Rose tinted goggles. Yeah, so this, I mean, you know, while Wyatt, Wyatt was telling the truth, he was telling the truth in a very, very disingenuous way um, and being you know, very deceitful, I feel like, in a lot of in his comments uh, regarding how money can be used to influence your character's overall power and progression. And this was 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 with Diablo Immortal. Now, we know that there's they're already making a comment saying, oh, yeah, like this is there's not going to be any power that you could buy when Diablo 4... But we've already heard this bullshit before. I mean, if they're gonna, if they're gonna, you know, try to pull the wool over our eyes this way, what's to say they're not gonna do it for Diablo Four as well? Come out saying, oh, it's only for it's only for cosmetics. And actually, in the uh, in this uh, in this write up here in this update, they actually do have a number of examples here where they say um, it says the shop sells cosmetics for premium currency. Like cosmetics, the shop is optional. The shop is transparent. <laughs> the product will make you happy. <laughs> uh, for a second there, I thought all those tweets are about D4 and I got scared. Oh, no, sorry. I was trying to make a distinction there. I think why I got, uh, got put into an impossible situation. He knew the monetization was going to be unpopular and his job was to go sell to people who hated it. Mm -hmm. Got so arrogant to say you don't have phones to PC crowd. Yeah, that was just a knee-jerk reaction and a very wrong one at that. All right, so <clears throat> here they basically show the distinction between having a cosmetic uh only which is the one on the right and the loot that you can find in the game and i want to point out too because this is something a lot of people miss you know when you think about it so like, well it's only cosmetics it's only cosmetics it's like well if there used to be a time when you could find all this cool stuff and earn all this cool stuff by doing things in the game right and you, oh i unlock this fucking cool sword or this cool armor or whatever right and all that stuff was in the game and now it feels like okay well now it's like you took content out of the original game or, or there's less available to us now in order to add this over here and it's hard to really say it's like well did they or would it have not been in the game in the first place um and see i can only see the damage dealt with my eyes as bonus damage of cosmetic uh see part of for asking any new songs oh sorry sorry ruben no i, have, I don't have anything new let me just let me just get through this news first then we're gonna chit chat dude uh i, I mean this guy so sorry um Cosmetics with extra power. Yeah. So there's they're showing here. It's like the one on the left is the one you could earn in the game. The one on the right is the one that you could buy. Uh, and it just goes on and on from there, right? Like it's just the way it is. The left and the right. And so they're just showing you it's like you could buy stuff or you could earn it. But you know, reality is like we all wanted to go back to the days where we could just earn it all through playing. Pay sixty dollars for a game and then just like play the fuck out of the game. Get more people to buy the game, right? <laughs> and then go from there. So that's the argument there against that. So armor transmogs in the shop are used while all characters of that class. Um, 
Yeah, the shop sells cosmetics. The shop, the shop. Yeah, they're trying. They're trying their best to convey that the things that they want you to pay for are not going to have a negative impact on your gaming experience. That's what they're trying to pitch here. They're trying to show that it's not going to. It's not going to have a, uh, a negative impact on your gaming experience. Um, <laughs> I paid eight dollars for a quality game that didn't have any microtransactions. I know I, they, they won't go that route though because uh, the, because of uh, those whales. And here's another quote that I pulled from Reddit too. This is a good one, and it says only two things will ever stop this now that Pandora's box has been opened. Was well, a long one. Uh, it says the whales. So one, the whales stop flushing tens of thousands down the toilet for a bunch of pixels, and this won't happen because the world will always have people with more money than sense willing to pay for the right to feel superior to others. Or two, the government takes action to stop the straight-up predatory monetization schemes that are becoming prevalent in games. This also won't happen because we live in a late-stage capitalist hellscape where the filthy rich representatives and government give so little of a shit that they won't even tell pharmaceutical companies to stop charging $1,000 for insulin that a huge number of people need in order to stay alive. This is true. This is all true. This is not being political. It's totally true. Uh, <laughs> it's facts. So, yeah, it's it, it, it's true. Like, when, uh, when are, is anybody going to change anything? Probably not. So this is something that creeped up on us. We knew it was coming. Little things here and there, right? There was like, uh, didn't Bethesda have like some kind of stupid, like a horse or something? Uh, WoW had their uh, sparkle pony. There was like all these little things that were kind of just kind of, ooh, we're going to test the waters here. And then all of a sudden it was just like, now it's like part, it's part of the core gaming experience. Um, horse armor. That's what it was. The horse armor. That was so long ago. But still, it was like one of the first ones that we all flipped out on him. We we're like, what the fuck? Horse armor? Like, what? <laughs> I mean, Capital has cosmetic DLC with some break too, but you have so many cool looking armors and games, special ones you can just get uh, grinding and their, uh, and their DLC is not expensive. Uh, Oblivion's horse armor was such a joke and now look at us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh-huh. ha <laughs> <laughs> we were the test crowd yeah damn I'm glad i'm not poor wait shit yeah so i'll see you there you go so yeah it was it was um i mean that was the first step towards it was like the small domino you know in the meme like the, with the blast domino is like you know some world ending you know <laughs> something <laughs> it all started with this one little <laughs> A fucking oblivion horse armor. Uh, it feels like we need to keep waiting for the next indie stroke of genius like Valheim. Large releases are so meticulously calculated, which is understandable because of the money involved. Yeah, Valheim, you know, there's there's some, like, we have some comments about Valheim too. I'm sure you probably do as well with the slowness of how they're getting things updated and everything. Especially now they're backed by the Embracer Group. Where's the money? Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, Valheim actually, just to, before we, change, we keep going on this, uh, Valheim actually was so successful that when the Embracer group reported uh, uh, being like having losses of like hundreds of millions of dollars for the quarter or the year, I think um, they said specifically that it was a little unfair because the popularity of Valheim was way beyond what they could have expected. And so, of course, it was going to dwarf anything that came after it because it was not a games as a service. Now, they didn't say that part, but that's the part that, you know, they were thinking. They're thinking, fuck, man, this game was so popular, we could have turned it into a game, into a games for service, a service, live service title. Could we could have had it, and now they're just like, fuck, it's over though. Um, Hades though, yeah, Hades, Hades is a good one. Inspires a lot, inspired a lot of other games. Thankfully, all the games that they that had uh, that were inspired by it, or just all the games in that genre, didn't like flip and start making, try to start making uh, money off of like little shops or whatever. They just don't really have. They don't really have that kind of, uh, I guess, presence, you know, in the market to do that. Like, you're, like Valheim announcing a shop. Oh my God, can you imagine? Like, we would flip the fuck out and then complete, and then basically finish forgetting about Valheim like the next day. Um, this is where Activision just showed up my feet. Ten MMOs I took aim at while Rift and Elmer's on the list. Perfect. What's perfect? Ten MMOs I took aim at World of Warcraft. Oh gosh, let me just, let me just open this real quick to see. I'm curious what if, how many of these I've played. Where am I online? Hey, I played that. Age of Conan, played that for a second. Algonon, didn't play that. Star Wars Old Republic, played that. Um, uh, Rift, played that. Runes of Magic, I've not played Runes of Magic. A lot's online. I can't believe that's on this list. Holy shit. <laughs> I played that too. <laughs> How'd that work out for you? Insane price of the cash shop stopped it. Pretty cold in the West. That's right. Yeah, this was really early in, um, this was really, really early in, uh, in free-to-play games. 
And uh, when they announced their cash shop in the West, people were just like, fuck that. It was like, it was like simple stuff too, like boosts, you know, like it was like XP boosts or whatever. Uh, Wildstar, we all know what happened to Wildstar. Project Titan, does that really count? Uh, Adventure Quest 3D, what the fuck? This one wasn't designed to take on WoW at all, but the designers did so very recently. What? Okay. Um, Dick Slider. <laughs> They say uh, they do not seem to see the connection, though. Uh, if it had been games as a service, it probably would not be that popular. It's, yeah, it's true. It's true. You know, but think think about how Valheim started versus where Minecraft is now, right? And I know that, you know, comparing Valheim to Minecraft, the behemoth that Minecraft is, it's kind of like, what the fuck are you talking about? But, but, but frankly, like, Minecraft also existed in a period of time where if we talked about Minecraft being like a continually updated service... Uh, which it kind of is right now. It has a revolving cash shop. It has tons of updates that are still going out, like huge updates. Declan just played uh, the, um, there was a, a SpongeBob map that you could download and it was insanely detailed. All the characters from SpongeBob were in it, right? They had functioning cars or whatever, like all these different mini games you could play. I was like, this is huge. And this is like decade, a decade plus later after its release. Right, but at the beginning, we would never have looked at the game and just say, "Yeah, Minecraft totally. It'll be around ten years. People will be playing. It's gonna be huge. It's gonna be massive. All this stuff." Nah, um, it took it took it took a company like Microsoft to basically make that happen. With Valheim, Valheim you know, starts off kind of small, right? It's, it's, I mean, it's a good game. It's a lot of fun. A lot of stuff you could do, uh, but it's still a relatively small and simple game. Lots of room for improvements. Lots of room for oh, some kind of shop or something like that. Get you custom maps, custom. Uh, cosmetics, custom furniture for your house, custom things to hang on your wall, right? There's all kinds, all kinds of shit. Um, Ruben, I think, I think, I think you may have one too many. <laughs> or you, or you get Cube World, yeah. Just goes to show a good base will last. Yeah, look at No Man's Sky. They turned that game into an absolute behemoth of the game off the original box price. It's true. Yeah, it has. Uh, both also Swedish. What's up with those guys? I know. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, uh, uh, sorry. I saw the comment. Yeah. What is this? Uh, a lot online where your BF report on it. Yeah, that was a good. That was a good one. I actually, I like that game too, but man, the cash shop just killed it. I think when I played it too, it was before the cash shop. Anyways, this is a great list. Uh, Warhammer online. One thing I appreciated about, no, it wasn't Warhammer. It wasn't Warhammer online. Never mind. It wasn't. There was another game that came out that looked like Warhammer, but it wasn't. It was from Russia. I can't remember the name, but it was fun. Um, See, so yeah, Dan, why did you remind us of Cube World? Pain. Yes, you just learned. You just learned. You just learned to forget about Cube World, honestly. <sighs> Eventually. Um, so, move. Ah, I had forgotten. <laughs> it's like the game. Oh man. Hmm. Hmm. How about Q World just like the devs did? Mm. Q World vids. That was a lot of fun. Moving on. So, somebody, somebody owes me five bucks. Remember this tweet? So, this was August 1st, and TwitchCon said, here it goes. Twitch got updated their health measures page. We talked about this, I think the last news, um, that they were going to uh, not require masks in, uh, in San Diego. Now, uh, in, in this in this past period of time, and I think actually before we talked about it, uh, the announcement was made that they were not going to require masks. Then later, San Diego, uh, maybe county or whatever, uh, made changes to their local recommendations saying that I think you didn't have to have masks on indoors. So that supported them not, Twitch not having masks, right? Prior to that, though, like a week and a half or something, there was... Um, uh, uh, there was a convention, anime convention or something, uh, and they had to have, or they did require masks, or they said they required masks, okay? Um, so call that a mile away. It was the e This was the easiest call. This was the easiest call. Oh, that's right, Calicom. What was it? Uh, Cali, was it Cali, Cali, uh, California. That's right, it was Ca California. That's right. Uh, most conventions are still requiring masks. Yeah, so, so it was weird that Twitch was going to announce no masks. So they flipped. They decided that they're going to go back on that. And they said that they're now going to. I'll read it here. It says, we've heard from many of you that you want to save for Twitch cons. We're updating our policy. Masks will be required indoors, as well as either proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test. So they did. They did backtrack on this. The comments. Now, I know that people here, here, and also watching at home, 
or wherever you're watching um probably have mixed probably have mixed feelings and uh and, and opinions about whether or not we should be wearing masks in uh 2022 uh so so as of right now it's like if if there's still people getting sick from this shit uh, there's still 500 people dying a day from this shit. Like maybe, you know, I'm not a doctor, but if the doctor says wear a mask and it's like, okay, I'll wear a mask. I'm not a fucking doctor. Right. Uh, also it's not a big deal. Wear a mask. Right. Um, but, but I get it. People want to go and have fun. They want to forget about all that bullshit and just go and do their own thing. It's just not the culture here in California yet. Right. We're oh, we were the, we were like really early in getting, uh, health health restrictions in place because we have all the metropolis megalopolises. So of course COVID was born here in fucking Santa Clara, um, at least here in the states, anyways. Uh, and then uh, uh, you know obviously across California, except for a couple of small counties and cities, you know pretty much everybody was on board. So culturally though, like we're pretty much used to just wearing masks. I mean even today, like I went to go get a get a, a chiropractor and wore a mask. It wasn't that big of a deal. Um, and so. You know, whatever the numbers are or whatever, by the time Twitch happens, their policy is that they're going to be re recommending masks or requiring masks. Whether or not they enforce it is another thing. Um, sh sort your shit out and use a mask to save lives. Yeah, it's easy. Maybe they fear that the States becomes the Middle East to mask us. Yeah, they they do. They do. They do feel if you want to pretend COVID doesn't exist, uh, go to a con in Florida. So a mask and keep it in my purse. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, like I said, I recognize fully that we here in like california and some other states too like we're, we're still like we still treat it like it's happening because it is still happening it's not as severe as it was but there's still 455 people dying a day you know so I don't, well, let me check that number real quick because actually i'm not I, I saw that number and i'm not entirely sure see covid deaths by state let me see covid covid deaths covid deaths in u.s that's what i'll do um Looks like uh, California, we've had uh, 94,000 deaths. And tell me what every day. Oh, God. Can you just tell me like all the past two weeks? Here we go. Who want me to die? 471 average. So 471 every day uh, over the past seven days. So, so yeah, like we still treat it like as a problem because, you know, some people dying from it. And also like a mess, not big of a deal. But I know that everywhere else, especially if you live somewhere where there's low population density, like you guys don't wear masks. And that's fine. Like I don't wear masks when I go outside. Like I'm doing outside shit getting gas. I don't wear a mask when I'm pumping fucking gas, right? I'll wear a mask by going to fucking Costco. Definitely wear a mask by going to Walmart. <laughs> there are places I'm just like, nah, man, I'm not, I'm not breathing your air. <laughs> and also, like, you know, I wasn't feeling too good a couple weeks ago, so I was like, you know, I'll wear a mask everywhere to be nice, you know? But, you know, it's 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 the uh, it's the comments, it's the replies and the quote retreats that I really, really want to point out in this one, because talking about being divided. So uh, phase phase Nick Merckx, you know, he's an L right mask. But no, it says, so your ticket sales sucked. Um, and this I think this pretty much sums up what what both sides are. So someone says, oh, so your ticket sales sucked. He says, no, they are higher than Amsterdam. Uh, and it said, um. And it is here we go. Way to way to cater to the triggered minority. I know I know not to buy since Twitch are wussies and would reverse their original policy. And she says, "Oh no, what will we do without you?" And I want to point out too, like there seems to be a lot of kickback in terms of like uh, people saying, you know, "Oh, this is terrible. Why go back on it? I shouldn't have to wear a mask, all that stuff." And I want to point out that the that that when you talk about who's a minority, look at who's liking these tweets. You know, so it's like, is that like a way that we could gauge this? Um, it's like, yeah, here we go. I can't, this can't, here's your fellow Arab, Arab. he's got, uh, um, he's, he's got a check mark. So, you know, that's automatically gives him a little bit of weight. It says, this can't be real. Y'all fold so fast. This is not a bad thing. Got 2,500 likes to 4,800. So at least we know that the, my minority is not the mask wear and people trying to be safe. It's the people who are not. Bunch of frog posters. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Mary Kish gives no shit. Probably from the GameStop, probably from her GameStop days. Nice. Um, downvote that shit. I'm not touching. I'm not touching. I'm not going to. I mean, maybe eventually, but I'm going to waste my time doing that shit. The quote retweets are a little bit more forgiving, though, I think, right? They look all over the place. Uh, it says, when Twitch is doing public health better than the CDC gov, uh, and this, again, the CDC is the one that recommended against you know wearing masks in, indoors or something. Can't remember. They made some kind of change. Uh, and it says, um, yeah, it says, oh, TwitchCon, I thought we were friends. How, how, why why have you abandoned me just to protect a few thousand humans? 
me reading the comments, boo-hoo. So yeah, there's, I, I definitely feel like just judging by the response and the reactions and the engagement on this one post, while there's definitely a lot of people who are against masks, which is fine, you could be against masks, you just have to wear one. <laughs> uh, there's definitely more people that are still leaning towards being safe and protecting other people. Uh, and that's what masks are really good for, you know? It's like, it's they're good for keeping your spit in your fucking mouth, so that way you're not putting shit all over the place. Um, and so that's, that's where Twitch is at. But somebody owes me five dollars. Your face has to be against the mask for it to work. So when I'm talking to somebody, we both gotta like get up in each other's faces. Being anti-COVID measure has a high correlation with being loud, I found. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's true. Hey, take it easy in the comments, YouTube. All right? Don't get fucking crazy. Don't get fucking crazy. Unless you're going to Twitch kind of get crazy. <laughs> Tuck that nose in. Mike is fishing for subs. Um, wait, what? How? <laughs> Tell me what the secret is. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they've backtracked a little bit on that. Um, so I love people that have come into my Walmart with their masks on their chins. God. Yeah, COVID has definitely made me realize how much I don't want to breathe in, like freely breathe in what's coming out of other people's mouths. I never had an issue with that before. Um, I don't think about it or anything, but when I, but, but whenever I'm going to like a place like Costco or something, Sprockety, by the way, thank you. Someone's a fish for subs. My dude. Um, it's a Californian. I know, I know. But now, but now when someone's like talking, it's like blah, blah, blah. And I can smell their breath. I'm like, <laughs> what about farts? Can you get COVID from farts? <laughs> it's the people who think the mask is only to protect, uh, them that are usually against them. The people who know it helps everyone usually are okay with masks. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing. It's like, you know, you're keeping your spit in your mouth, you know? Um, so, man, I, the shit that I see, I dropped off, uh, I dropped off Declan at school and you know, all the parents outside are wear masks, right? Which I thought was a trip. Like I, I don't, again, I don't really wear masks outside like ever. Right. Not lately during the height of COVID I was for sure. Um, but like, you know, they're, they gathered up outside. They're all gathered up outside the school because they're not allowed on school premises because of COVID. Um, and they're all, all the parents are like wearing masks and I, I drop off Declan and this, this parent like pulls down his mask and fucking sneezes. Right. And blows fuck. Like, I mean, you could, it was the morning. Right. So the sun is like coming up over the mountain. It was like golden morning hour. Right. And so you get this like beautiful sparkle of fucking spit spray and everything. Like, like slow-mo guys. And then he puts his mask back up. I was like, fuck this. <laughs> And there's tons of people around. Everyone's wearing masks. <laughs> and they're like, fuck. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Uh, dude, like one of the huge upsides of masks is if you go in certain areas and you have uh, to walk past someone, say homeless, you don't have to smell that thanks to your mask. Yeah, my uh, my mom went to go visit my brother. And, um, and, uh, he lives, he lives, he lives, he lives somewhere where they don't really, really wear masks. Okay. Uh, and my mom was wearing her mask in the house. My brother was like, it's not because of COVID. Right. And my mom was, my mom trying to, she was like, it was because of his farts. <laughs> She's saying, <laughs> wait, <laughs> sorry, Chris, if you're watching this, but <laughs> my mom said that wearing a mask actually helped as you didn't start to smell as farts. And I was like, oh shit. Does that mean that like fart, like fart smell particles are like bigger than what the, the you know, big enough to get caught in like the mesh of a mask or something like that. How does that work? I don't understand the science behind that. <laughs> but you know, it seems like it's something in my work. Um, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> yes, to an extent. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck. They definitely are poop particles. <laughs> Time's gone too long. You seem fine. I am fine. I am fine. Had COVID twice, maybe three times. But the first time fucking sucked. God damn, first time fucking sucked. Anyways, fart smell particles. This is the random random stuff I sub for. That's right. How big are those? We looked those up after the stream. Anyways, moving on. So, uh, Nexus mods, Nexus mods. Uh, uh, thank you to the person who dropped this to me in uh, in Twitter. I appreciate it. 
Uh, by the way, also, like, if you guys have, like, news stories and stuff that you want me to take a look at, not all of them are going to be covered because sometimes it's like, I don't give a shit about this thing. And also, it's not as impactful as, like, some of the other things we're talking about. Like, Embracer Group buying up all the companies. I don't care what's happening in some random little game. Some random micro community it has no impact on, like, overall gamings. Um, and so, uh, but I appreciate when people bring shit up to me. So, thank you. Because the thought that counts, right? It's thought that counts. Even if I take the present and I re return it. To Amazon, right? Even if I return the present to Amazon, I still appreciate the thought. So you could always, but my BDO killed. <laughs> yeah, you can always, you can always drop it to me uh, on Twitter through a DM. My DMs are open, uh, or you could drop it to me as DM on uh, in Discord as well. So I'm there. So uh, I thought you were a variety streamer. I am. How much more variety you want? God. <laughs> I got to dig deeper, get right into the minutia of every game, the politics. So speaking of local politics, but this is Nexus Mod. It's kind of a big deal, right? Uh, so this was uh, this was actually a pretty funny read, and I'll try to just highlight some of them here. But basically, I'll start us off. It says, recently, there's been silly drama on our site that sparked someone uploading a mod for Spider-Man Remastered. The mod replaced the very few pride flags uh, the game actually has with the already prevalent USA flag texture from the game. The mod was removed from Nexus Mods, and the author was banned. To address the banning, which is what a lot of people want to focus on. The mod was, uplo uh, was uploaded by a sock puppet. So basically a fake account. And the uploader's name was Mike Hawk. Um, clearly done deliberately to troll a mo mod. With a name like Mike Hawk? What? Uh, so they basically say that they, they, they banned it, right? They got rid of it. Uh, and... <laughs> And he says, uh, in regards to replacement of pride flags in this game, Randy Gamer, our policy is this. It's thus. We are for inclusivity. We are for diversity. If we think someone is uploading a monitor site with the intent to deliberately be against inclusivity and or diversity, then we will take action against it. The same goes for people attempting to troll others, users, other users with mods deliberately, deliberately to cause a rise. For our part, we will endeavor to do a better job in moderating the site, etc. AKA Mike Hawk. Uh, <laughs> and so it says here, it says, we, da, 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 let me see, where is it? All right, here he goes. As a private, as a private business, we have a right to choose what content we do and do not want to host on our platform. Respect this right the same way you want, uh, you want to respect for your rights. If you feel something goes against our policy, then please report it. However, we will be the educators of what we do or do not, uh, the want on next response. Uh, and it says, we don't want, we, we do not want to and won't argue with you, this with you. We've now explained our stance and we won't be providing a platform for you to distort our position or to feed an irrational or paranoid narrative. You can do that elsewhere where we won't care care enough to read it. If this policy upsets you. If we've broken some moral code of conduct as a business that you can't accept, then please delete your account and move on as we will. <laughs> so thank you for this submission. And this was such a such a great little side quest here. I love this. <laughs> if we if we hurt your feelings, <laughs> then fuck off. Um, but yeah, I think this is pretty well addressed and also a good way, a, a good way to, they ban they banned a, a, a fucking sock puppet account, but they, they able, they were able to use that opportunity to, to basically put out a statement, uh, justifying further bans for people that want to do bullshit like this. They're being reasonable. Actually. Yeah. They're being totally reasonable. There's other, there's other sites that support this. They even said here, they're like, only thing that happens is that you just can't host it on this site. That's all. And that's what they're trying to get a point. The point across is that, you know, it's like, well, you could just go take it somewhere else. Some other Nexus mod site. There's other ones that exist out there. People call everyone snowflakes being actual snowflakes. I feel like I see that a lot. I feel like I see that a lot. Um, <laughs> that's a lot of, a lot, a lot of projection. Uh, anyways, that was, a, that was a funny one. We got to include that one today, but also another one. This one is, um, so this is a JP, J, you know, guys with JP McDaniels. Uh, JP McDaniels is a um, it me JP on Twitter and everything else. Uh, he uh, Starcraft two caster. Uh, he he's done countless countless projects online. Like you, most people probably know of JP. If not, you've probably seen something with him in a like role play or something. Um, so, anyways, he he put out a video. Yeah, there you go. That's him right there. He looks just like that too. <laughs> with glasses oh never mind his glasses are on in that one <laughs> he does so many shows yes yeah. his pink face socks wait does he actually have socks that look like that <laughs> no 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 does he that's cursed that's cursed <laughs> if he does 
If he doesn't, he should get some. Um, MCU crew with Jesse and Bronze. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, he's done. J JP has been on a lot of stuff. He's done a lot of shit. He's got his hands on a lot of things. Uh, you'll bring them to me. I need to replace. I need to replace my my Super Meat Boy rice. My rice fidget. Oh, I haven't used this in a while, actually. You know why? Because I haven't. I have been. I used to use it a lot when I was really suffering with anxiety, like suffering, suffering, because I would have like sweaty palms all the time, right? And so I used to use it a lot for that. And I don't use it that much anymore. It's kind of clicks dust now. It's just kind of a thing. It's kind of throwing around every once in a while. I want to fidget. Anyways, so uh, um, oh, I don't know. Load it up. So so he he gets into it talking about in his state of the stream video. He talks about um the current state of uh of Twitch, the current meta. And I can't, I, I can't help but to fully agree with his assessment. And it's something that I've talked about as well. And it felt, it was validating for me as a content creator to see that, okay, cool. It's not just me. Like everybody feels this way uh, or other people feel this way. So I'm going to play this back at 1.25 uh, speed. So he's going to be talking a little bit faster than he normally does. Just going to play. I think, you know, to ruminate on that a little bit, Twitch is in this weird spot is a website uh, in terms of discovery and growth where playing games is not the avenue for growth anymore. Um, unless you're kind of uh, someone that sits on top of a directory, you know, with 10,000 plus viewers and can kind of take that community and go around and, and dominate the latest and greatest releases, you're not going to really see any growth. It's, it's, you're going to see stagnation or you're just going to simply fall off. Um, and so I've, I haven't adjusted to that, so to speak. Um, and I don't know if I will, M maybe I, if I can find a happy medium where I can continue doing what I want to do and, and that becomes, you know, profitable and there's less volatility and, uh, and all the numbers and analytics. And that would probably be the best case scenario, but it's part of what I'm kind of using this break for is to actually be able to think about that stuff without also having to work at the same time, every single day. Um, I think your, your mental, um, you know, your mind can get into some bad places while you're thinking about all that and also streaming at the same time. So, so yeah, I just want to note on that. It's true. It's very true. Like there's a lot of times where you'll you'll get kind of really caught up in like the in like the business side of what you're doing, and you're just like, okay, I really enjoy doing this, but like, how much how much runway do I have? Like, should I try this? I feel the market's going this way, and there's and maybe I should try this. And maybe I should try. And meanwhile, you're live every day. You're doing stuff every single day. You know, so you're not ever really taking the time to fully flesh out those thoughts. And so all you're left with whatever, whatever is the quickest, the quickest, like, you know, like, uh, 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 I guess the quickest, like summary you can, which is like, if I don't do this, I'm going to, I'm going to be broke or I'm going to find another job or whatever, instead of really thinking through like, okay, wait, do I have the means to do this? Can I make these pivots? Can I do whatever? Um, <clears throat> did he finally go on vacation? Well, this is, this video was released a couple days ago. So I'm guessing he's going, uh, uh, in a week from now or so. Cause yeah, he's, he's going to go for a two weeks vacation, but it's at the end of this month. I think JP is one of those that puts a ton of work into the back end, the setting up shows, et cetera. And is always focusing on the numbers. It takes a toll over time. Yeah. I have to say I came here for Mike and I come back cause of Mike. Cause you're just entertaining and a good dude. Well, thank you so much. But let me tell you, it's, it's tough. And I fully agree with everything he's saying. It's very true. And there's more here. We're going to listen to, but just so you guys know, it's like, yeah, it's, it's for, for people who create content and we feel like we're on that treadmill. Like, uh, so there's this DJ I follow, he's a Mario Choa, right? Um, and a producer and DJ. Um, and like, he is like constantly putting out reels. Like, and because on Instagram, you have to put out reels. So you're constantly putting out reels nonstop. Um, and like, he made a comment on Twitter the other day. He was like, I wish I could just make music. And it's like, damn, it sucks. It's like all these producers who are forced to now exist in in like a video formats and it has to be catchy and, has, and so not only do you have to make the music that's going to be included in the video but then you have to actually like record the video for that whatever that song is or whatever right however you want to format that video um it's with a lot of longtime creators it's, uh, uh it's some it's with a lot of longtime creators some have lost a lot of viewers it's okay so the the um so the 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 landscape of content creation has changed so much so that it's like it's burning people out faster than it used to because the demand is so much higher than it was right like right now i'm like i mean i'm like making instagram reels i'm making tiktoks uh i'm making i'm making fucking porn stuff for my adult side i'm do, i'm doing gaming shit like i'm doing live streams you know like there's so much shit that i'm trying to do because none of it will pay the bills independently so you have to do all these things in order to make money. Um, and like, so I get what he's saying. It's just like, it's like, it's, it feels almost like a treadmill. Listen to a little bit more here. 
that's what I'm doing the break for. Um, we'll see what happens when I come back. We might shift away from being so gaming dominant. Um, we might try and find, you know, a handful of playthroughs every single year that I do 100% of the time and, and the rest of the streams are something else, uh, whatever that is, I'm not sure. Um, but unfortunately, the, the type of games that I generally enjoy, uh, the JRPGs, the, the long grind fest, they're not the greatest for viewership. Um, most of the time, the best type of uh, content in terms of you're saying best is in highest numbers or anything like that. It's typically stuff like this where I'm just talking with chat and, and communicating with chat. The second that I swap over to a game, it'll uh, it'll drop off. That's kind of where I think most of Twitch is at as well. He's right. <laughs> He's fucking right. It's totally true. And I see it in my analytics too. I get I get a little I get an email that shows like how my performance was uh for the, for that day at the end of every stream. And it, it basically just pops up and it says, like, Oh yeah, you did great. Like, Keep on hustling or whatever. And then it shows you the it shows you the the climb. And so it's like, okay, here's my, here's where I was just chatting, and it was like, Oh, I played a game just like that. Um so yeah, it's 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 tough. It's it's tough to it's tough when like the analytics tell you okay you have to be a react andy if you want to go if you want to further growth and engagement and everything and it's true and i don't mind like we don't it's not like it's a bad thing necessarily to be a react andy right just basically if you don't know what a react andy is by the way it's based it's somebody who um watches videos on stream and then does react stuff right comments on them in real time you should be commenting on it okay kind of like how we're doing right now with jp this is the react content that we're doing this is the react segment of the news basically um and so and so it makes sense it's like the 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 when we're communicating and talking to people like you guys uh, that is where we get the best engagement that's where we get the best viewership people stick around a little bit longer um and that's where most of our successes are coming now versus like playing a game like playing any game and i see it too like i'll play a game a little bit longer than i should and even though i'm enjoying the game it doesn't necessarily mean that people enjoy watching it so they don't hang out and so your viewership ends up going down you're not bringing in new viewers um let me read some of the stuff from you guys though so that's what happened with uh jovian he blew up mega big on the front page and bro and uh uh it put so much pressure on him and it broke his whole personality on stream and he had to take a break he eventually got back to his old stuff though you know, I, yeah yeah I, I i used to watch uh, uh jovian a lot and i just took a break from watching it. i don't know what happened uh, after a certain amount of time but i know he was like, mixing it up a little bit but i went back and i went and it's funny because i must have taken a break right when he was taking a break but i hear it though like i hear that happening for sure uh i hear inflatable pools bring in viewers yeah uh could <laughs> see ruben ruben man i wish i could fix that for you i'm sorry about your apple tv dude uh mike b rex asthma gold rex a bowler yeah um i think modern attention spans uh, people like that talking react stuff for quicker entertainment, but also tune out without missing stuff. Um, uh, as you would be watching it would, if you're watching a playthrough, it's basically, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot of folks who likes the, like to be able to just put up a stream and just tune out for sure. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Reactions are good. Look at all the YT channels that are purely reactions. People want to, uh, something to relate to and to feel connected. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a big difference between high quality short bursts versus medium length con uh, continuously. The internet doesn't pay out enough for the short bursts, only continuous content creation. Yeah, it, it's, it's, there's a push like on YouTube for us to make reels. And, you know, I don't mind making reels. It's a pain in the ass, of course, because it's like all the content I create is not necessarily real specific, um, <clears throat> like real, you know, not vertical or anything. Um, not real shorts, shorts is what they're called. Anyways, there's a push for us to do that. But then what I hear is that people who are making like a fuck, are getting like millions of views on, on shorts, they're not making any money off of it. So basically working for free and it's supposed to give exposure to the rest of your channel. And that sounds like a bunch of horse, like a whole bunch of horse shit. Um, and most of our streamers are stuff like this with chatting and ASMR for my extremely high blood pressure. Your ASMR, that helps, huh? So yeah, I'm So I mean, you guys are already giving me, I, I have notes here, you know, it's like, you know, my own experience and how I'm adapting and then chat's experiences with other streamers. And I appreciate you guys have already jumped on this to give me a, more insight into what other streamers are doing. Uh, I really enjoy both sides, the chatting in here and the gaming stuff. When you're gaming, usually I'm playing something as well and watching whatever you're playing since it's usually something I wouldn't normally play. Yeah, yeah. And and, and and just so you know, I don't plan on ever like being like, okay, I'm never going to play a game again because I'm always playing. Even off stream, I'm still playing games. Um, that's when you guys should worry is when I stop playing games off stream. <laughs> <laughs> that's when something's wrong with me right but no i still play games like all the time and like i said some of it's probably games that people don't want to watch and that's fine like i'm playing fate tactics right now it's not the most exciting game i fall asleep playing it myself half the time 
<laughs> so if you wake up, if you wake up, you know, if you're in the UK or something like that or wherever and you wake up and you see that I'm playing Fate Tactics at four o'clock in the morning my time, just know I'm sleeping on the couch. <laughs> Uh, uh, sometimes Sherry plays a game and I don't want to get spoiled so I end up not watching yeah so that's the other thing too is that there's a lot of there's a lot of content that, that people don't want to watch because they don't want to be spoiled um, anyways you, you I think you guys are you guys see you guys already get it you see what's happening there's a lot of like it's like okay well if I do this then this this person is going to tune out if I do this then this person is going to tune out um, there are folks that they're going to be there no matter what you do no matter what you do people are going to be there and that's why you bought Fate Tactics because of me? You want a refund? Boy, that game is so good! It gets so good! Are you kidding me? I still love the game. I just play it too late. I'm just always too late when I'm playing it. Uh, that's what we call on Sunday to interview when you're not playing off stream. Mm -hmm. So for me, for me personally, what I've been doing to try to make, to try to make, um, to basically continue doing what I'm, what I'm doing here and make keep my sanity and also keep growth and everything going is uh, just trying to like change where we could stream. Right, we've already done my first cooking stream. We made granola, and we're gonna do another one probably next week. By the way, because I have this like hot honey, and I want to make granola with it and see what it's like. Spicy honey, I don't know. Anyways, uh, and then there's like the garage streams that we're doing, the backyard streams. Like I'm trying to add a little bit of diversity in there because you know, one, I don't mind the diversity myself. I don't like sitting here in this chair every day um, to do shows. I'd rather just change uh, change it up a little bit. And so uh, I'm trying to add that kind of diversity uh, in this as well. Uh, for all of our sakes, really. We could grow the channel some more. We could do all this. But it's a lot to juggle. Because then after you're done with the stream, like you got to chop it up and make TikToks and shorts and reels and all that stuff. So it's it's an endless it's an endless loop of constantly making content. And so JP taking a break, man, that's uh, that sounds nice. You know, I don't, I don't have any breaks. I take a lot of small breaks. So I'm not like, I'm not really looking for any kind of like huge, huge, like I'm going to see you guys in a month thing or anything like that. But um yeah, I see the the I honestly like 99% of the streams I watch. It doesn't matter what they're doing. I come for the personality. It's mostly background stuff to divert my attention from dealing with IRL. Yeah. And so, you know, uh one reason why I try really really hard not to dive too deep into politics on stream unless I'm in a fucking mood, right? Or it's a big thing or whatever is because I know that this is an escape for folks. I know that it's an escape for folks. And I don't want to go to a stream and then like hear somebody talk about some bullshit that I'm trying to escape from. Right. Just like I said earlier before the stream where it was like, you know, watching TikToks that were about people that have anxiety when I was suffering from anxiety. And it's like, no, what, what? Why are you showing me stuff that's making me feel worse? <laughs> Show me the half. The, I need the happiness, please. Uh, you're taking a week off in October anyways. Yeah, I've got a couple of small days here and there, you know. Please do that now. And he's caught up uh, to live. Great week of him doing variety. Oh, what did what did Preach do? I have a friend who's making uh, YouTube and TikTok videos of his gaming, and I keep up with him. Uh, uh, I keep trying to get him grounded. He has a career. He doesn't need the stress of endlessly making content and worry about metrics. Oh my God, this is me with Declan right now. Yeah, I'm trying so hard to like. He loves the shorts and the the, the shorts that I put together with us and all that. Um, but I really, really, really don't want him to get caught up in this in this treadmill. Not, 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 uh, not without like some good introduction and like some good like guidance. You know, like. I don't want him to have to worry about all this extracurricular shit. Maybe one day I'll retire and I'll just be Declan's editor, right? I'll just, I'll, Declan, you do the funny shit and I'll just, I'll just write this shit down. I'll just edit the video. I'll do all the social stuff. You know, I don't want him involved in that stuff. See them numbers? Fuck them. Exactly. Fuck them. So you find a week to not stream with a content break so I can work on my personal stream model. Too many emergency commission work. <laughs> see? 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 So finally... Finally, Mark Zuckerberg. I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna skip it, but you know, because we're, we're we got a good episode wrapped up, but we gotta take an opportunity to make fun of the Zuck. So Mark Zuckerberg spent ten billion dollars on the metaverse, and all he got was this stupid selfie. So this is an article by PC Gamer talking about, of course, the metaverse, uh, which um, which they did spend a fuck ton of money on, <laughs> and. Uh, Peach, Peach basically ditched well for like six months to play Final Fantasy XIV. His mental health gained so much. He's been absolutely killing a number of ways to literally change his life. Nice, nice. Yeah, I know a lot of people did that switch. Did pretty good. Fucking missed it. This guy was there at the beginning. I was, I'm like a Final Fantasy hipster. Anyway, so yeah. Bad! 
Bad graphics, man. Bad graphics. I love that. This is actually reads really well, too. I got to read some of this. It says, I don't want to start this post by personally attacking Mark Zuckerberg's eyes, which have in years past been described as two weird little black marbles and vacant black shark eyes. Who wouldn't look utterly bereft of uh, bereft of a soul after trying to explain the Internet to the United States Senate? I also need to suggest Mark Zuckerberg may, in fact, be a robot since there's an entire meme community devoted to the joke. I'm avoiding these easy, obvious dunks on old Zuck because of his latest metaverse. Uh, Selfie looks so bad. He's already owned himself harder than I possibly could. And so, yes, there's this. There's a, there was another one that was released somewhere else, another like selfie or whatever. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg's or Facebook's metaverse, whatever, um, is just not up to snuff and everybody's ragging on it right now. So like, let's give you these examples here. This is a good one. Uh, so this is basically comparing Second Life. Um, <clears throat> Uh, there's a no that's the real one. Oh shit yeah just no that's that's the that's the that's the screenshot guys <laughs> I, <laughs> you thought somebody yeah because exactly okay good now you get it now you get it <laughs> yeah see so it is a uh it is a little jarring to look at, but this this is this is the uh, this was the shit. That's some uncanny valley. Is it even? It's not even in uncanny valley space yet. This is like the fucking me's, like like Nintendo Wii me. <laughs> That's all it is. PS One versus PS Two. Don't worry, people people got that covered, man. Here's Second Life, which has been around forever, two thousand seven, longer than that. Uh, and then here is Mark Zuckerberg's fucking selfie. Here's the whole thing. Here's the whole thing. See, look, you can see more. Um, <clears throat> there's also, let me go further in here. There's also this other one that was pretty good. This one's from, um, uh, what are we comparing here? Pretend Berlin Towns. Yes, yeah, this is Sims Nintendo. Yeah, here we go. Here's, this is the Eiffel Tower and Twisted Metal 2, which came out in 19, what? 1996. Yeah, there's Eiffel Tower there. There's Eiffel Tower there. I mean, they're just comparing that. You know, it's just, it's just not, it's just not that good. And also, like, everybody's got no legs. And I was reading, I wish I'd save some of these tweets. I was, like, deep in some of these tweets. People were saying some shit like, um, <clears throat> let me see if I can find it. Uh, no, okay, okay. Oh, there's actually, there's more in this article here. God, this is so good. Oh, that's a different article. Hold on, I got a different article here. <laughs> Every Everyone's dunking on him, man. Everyone's dunking on him. Yeah, here's this thing. Uh, and then, let me see. Here's the... Yeah, here's what you can see. Here's what nobody has. Nobody has uh, lower torsos so that nobody can have sex in the metaverse. So yeah, nobody has lower torsos. Everything is just from the waist up. Um, and all the pictures, you'll see that. And so there's a there's a lot. Here you go. There's a lot of cool reasons to uh, to mock the metaverse. But the neat thing is that you don't have to even think that hard because it simply looks like shit. Um, legs cost extra. Who did the higher ever texturing and lighting engines? Who got? There's no textures. <laughs> what textures? <laughs> Mies have better, better, yeah. Mies do have better. Looks like VR Chat Alpha. Yeah, there's already so many platforms that exist that have just like, I mean, way, way better everything. Uh, VR Chat's a great example. Second Life's a great example. And fucking Sims is a great example. Um, why would you take sex out of a social construct? Construct. What is this? Uh, there was an update. What was this update? Update is, uh, I just got cyber bullies. Oh. Got Cyberboy so much uh, over his company's metaverse graphics that he announced an update. Major updates uh, to Horizon and Avatar graphics coming soon. I'll share more at Connect. Also, I know the photo I posted earlier this week was pretty basic. It was taken very quickly to celebrate a launch. The graphics in Horizon are capable of much more, even on headsets, and Horizon is improving very quickly. And it shows this uh, this picture here. <laughs> People are shitting on him. Uh, I mean, it still looks weird, right? It still looks weird, but whether or not this is how they're displayed in game, I mean, clearly not. If this is the screenshot you gave us, uh, it must be like another update coming later on. But still, now he's looking Pixar. Yeah, like this looks, this looks better. But we, but we're not seeing that. We're not stupid, right? We're fucking gamers. We know when they have a picture in front of a gray background, it's like, all right. So what's it actually look like in the game? Like, there's one thing for it to be in the actual render where they make it, and there's the other one where they remove like you know, 99% of the vertices or whatever the fuck. And then, they, and, then, and then they put it out and it's like, oh, great. Now it looks like fucking Valheim faces or whatever this is, right? Comp BS. Yeah. So obviously, yeah, he reacted to it. I had, you know, it's funny. I had that open. I have that, uh, that face open. I didn't know it was, what it was sourced from. Uh, I had that open on this tweet. His Lux new metaverse model looks, looks like Jonesy Fortnite. Um, he looks like a serial killer. Wait, here or in real life? 
<laughs> I say so now it's Fortnite Zuck with photorealistic environment. Yeah, it's clearly just a reaction. Just a reaction. Just for him to do both. Why not both? Okay, no, it's those. Yeah, why not both? Anyway, <laughs> it's so bad though. Oh man, I love that everyone's just shitting on it. Just everyone just got to shit on it. It's so good. Facebook spent $10 billion on Metaverse projects in 2021. The graphics that came out of a computer game developed in 1997. Those characters in the other photo look so generic and nondescript, so I guess now everybody can be a background NPC from a single player game. Yeah, this is going to be a real tough sell to anybody who who is uh, who has any part in the games industry, whether you're playing games, consumer, or making games or whatever. Uh, this is going to be something they're going to market to, you know, your mom. Okay. It's, gonna, it's the people on Facebook. Uh, that's all it is and i the whole like no legs thing it just seems lazy like vr chat vr chat you could have crazy models right but even if you don't have leg sensors you could still walk it's just not really going to react this kind of moves with you you know you could still walk um here i i, I it feels very lazy they're just gonna like just ah, just take them out just don't even worry about that do they play the developers with meta coins? Probably. They probably sold them land or something. Although, god damn it, you know, now you think now I think about it, it's like that's very plausible. Like if somebody's setting up metaverse and they're gonna have like land plots they're gonna sell, like we've seen in other games, especially blockchain games. Um, <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised if you're know, part of agreements to bring people on board for some of these metaverse uh, projects is that they're promised some kind of virtual land or virtual property or something to make their virtual life a little bit better. You know, kind of like Cypher from Matrix, right? And um, I want to be rich, you know, like uh, someone famous, like an actor or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, Jesus, man. Uh, Wachowskis, man, they were on it. They knew what was up. They knew it was coming. Whoa, blackout. Um, <laughs> Earth 2. If they sell land, actual real estate developers will come and swipe it up to capitalize on another on other people's misery. It's gonna happen, yeah. It's the Zillow of uh, of of the metaverse or something. Uh, but you do sell Nike right away with the initial rush, so I hope it takes off to sell for big money. I see it working well, seeing how booming NFTs are. But right now, NFTs are kind of like stagnant for now. Um, but we'll see. Have to pay IRL rent and metaverse rent, which is something that happens like Second Life. And I, I know people here could probably um, comment on that. Uh, like there are games that, are, that currently exist that have like functioning economies in that regard that use real money or money that you've earned in the game. Um, most are down like 90% NFTs. Yeah, they are. They are. And just so you know, too, just to go back on the Embracer group, the CEO of Embracer group was commenting about how uh, he was happy that to see that uh, blockchain and NFT talk has like basically fizzled out because now we could focus on just making games so 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 just i understand that you know with the embracer group thing that we talked about at the beginning of the episode it kind of feels like well what can we expect because all our experience with all these other big game companies is that's usually bad activision blizzard bad ea bad right so our expectations is like you're probably going to be a piece of shit when you get big enough because that's what we've experienced with everybody else in the past um but we already have the ceo making comments saying thank god we don't have to fucking worry about that shit right now uh, but that doesn't mean that they wouldn't have jumped on that shit if it, if it did become more prevalent, more usable. I still believe it's something that's going to pick up in the future, but right now we're not ready for it. Uh, Ultima Online has actual real estate communities because land is finite there. When I left like 15 years ago, I sold my castle plot for 7,000 USD. Damn, Zabrios! And then you bought a house out in the middle of nowhere, Indiana, and now you're refurbishing it, dude. God damn. God damn. Fake land for real land. You, sir, we should talk. <laughs> You've got your shit figured out. Um, hopefully, I'll be dead by then. No, no, no. Because that's going to be like next year, dude. <laughs> we'll see. That's it for the news. Chat, you guys can hang out for a little bit. But let's go ahead and say goodbye to everybody on YouTube. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Chat, for joining me. You guys are the best. Thank you. Thank you. Like said, for me, is Capcom. Most AAA studios are greedy fucks. That's right. That's right. Buy TikTok, buy TikTok. <laughs> no, I should promote TikTok, huh? AK Mike be on TikTok, okay? That's it. Thank you so much for joining me again, chat. You guys are the best. Fuck, I keep forgetting the goddamn thing. Our new one.